the mandibular nerve. Hi there. Have you ever wondered what's making those cheeks rise and those pearly whites shine when you smile? Well, get ready to meet the hero behind your grin. The mandibular nerve. This superstar nerve supplies power to your lower teeth, lips, and other structures of the oral cavity. Pop quiz. Are you wondering how the trigeminal nerve is related to the mandibular nerve? Well, let's get into it then. Picture this, a massive nerve stretching across your face like a grand highway with three distinct exits leading to different cities. We call it the trigeminal nerve and each exit represents a branch. The ophthalmic nerve, the maxillary nerve and the mandibular nerve. As we cruise down the trigeminal highway, we'll be putting our focus on one of its most exciting branches, the mandibular nerve. The mandibular nerve is a mixed nerve. What this means is that it has both sensory and motor components. Did that sound complicated? Let's put it this way. The trigeminal nerve has two other branches in addition to the mandibular nerve. These are the maxillary nerve and the ophthalmic nerve. The acronym MOM can be used to remember these branches. The ophthalmic nerve is a purely sensory nerve that carries the stimulus of pain, light touch and temperature from the upper eyelids and the supraorbital region of the face. Similarly, the maxillary nerve carries sensation from the mid-facial region and therefore is also purely sensory. However, the mandibular nerve has both sensory and motor functions. The union of these roots makes the mandibular nerve capable of both functions, making it a mixed nerve. Let's learn more about the sensory and motor roots of the mandibular nerve. The mandibular nerve has two roots, each with its unique role. The sensory root is responsible for carrying sensory information from the lips, lower teeth and other structures of the oral cavity to the brain. The motor root, on the other hand, is responsible for carrying motor information from the brain to the muscles of mastication. These muscles are responsible for moving the jaw during chewing and biting. Both roots unite to make the trunk of the mandibular nerve. Pop quiz. Now let's talk about the course of the mandibular nerve. The mandibular nerve must navigate through a series of obstacles to reach its final destination. The two roots originate in the middle cranial fossa and pass through the foramen ovale. This opening is a tight squeeze and the mandibular nerve must pass through it carefully to avoid getting stuck or damaged. Once through the foramen, both roots combine to form the trunk of the nerve within the infratemporal fossa. Here, the nerve lies between the tensor villi palatini and the lateral pterygoid muscle. Let us explore the branches of the mandibular nerve. These are the branches from the main trunk, which include the meningeal branch and a few muscular branches. The meningeal branch is purely sensory. It is also called the recurrent branch because it turns backwards and goes back into the skull through the foramen spinosum, along with the middle meningeal artery to supply the dura mater. The muscular branches supply the medial pterygoid, tensor villi palatini and tensor tympani muscles. The mandibular nerve also sends out two smaller expeditions to explore different regions. 
These two smaller groups of explorers and their members represent the two divisions and the various branches of the mandibular nerve. The first group of explorers sent out by the mandibular nerve is the anterior division, which travels to the front of the head, mainly to the face. Members of this group represents the various branches of the anterior division, including the buccal nerve, masseteric nerve, the deep temporal nerves, and the nerve to lateral pterygoid muscle. The buccal nerve is on a special mission to explore the outer reaches of the oral cavity towards the cheek and report back with information. This is because it is the only purely sensory branch of the anterior division. It carries sensation from the skin and mucous membranes of the cheek, but not the buccinator muscle. The masseteric nerve travels through the deep layers of the masseter muscle before branching off to innervate the muscle fibers. It also sends fibers to supply the temporomandibular joint, or the TMJ. The deep temporal nerves supply the temporalis muscle, which is responsible for jaw movement during chewing. There are two of these nerves on each side. The nerve to the lateral pterygoid muscle provides motor innervation to the lateral pterygoid muscle, which is responsible for opening and closing the jaw. Pop quiz. Now, let us get back to our heroic explorers. The second group of explorers sent out by the mandibular nerve is the posterior division that travels to the back of the head. The branches of the posterior division include the auriculotemporal nerve, the lingual nerve, and the inferior alveolar nerve. The auriculotemporal nerve travels along the side of the head behind the ear and up to the temple region. This nerve provides sensation to the skin of the temple and scalp, as well as to the parotid gland and temporomandibular joint. The lingual nerve carries sensations from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, as well as to the floor of the mouth and the lingual gingiva. It also carries taste sensations from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue through its connection with the corda tympani nerve. We'll discuss this further in a bit. The inferior alveolar nerve provides sensory innervation to the lower teeth as well as to the chin and lower lip. This nerve also gives off branches that innervate the mylohyoid muscle and the anterior belly of the digastric muscle. Pop quiz There is so much more to know about the auriculotemporal branch of the mandibular nerve. This nerve plays a major role in postganglionic parasympathetic innervation. Let us assume the auriculotemporal nerve as a tiny messenger who travels from the ear to the parotid gland to deliver an important message. As it travels along its route, the nerve carries with it a special package of postganglionic parasympathetic fibers from the otic ganglion. When the nerve reaches the parotid gland, it delivers its message loud and clear. The message is a request for the gland to start producing saliva. Upon receiving this message, the parotid gland springs into action, producing saliva and sending it down to the mouth. Damage to the auriculotemporal nerve can result in a loss of sensation to the temple and auricle, as well as dry mouth due to the lack of saliva secretion from the parotid gland. Pop quiz.
the lingual nerve has a lot more hidden talent than meets the eye. Let's explore this nerve further and its special relationship with the cauda tympani nerve, a branch of the facial nerve. The two are like best friends who love to go on adventures together. The cauda tympani nerve arises from the facial nerve within the petrotympanic fissure and courses through the middle ear before joining the lingual nerve within the infratemporal fossa. As they travel through the head and neck, they work closely together. The lingual nerve is responsible for carrying sensory information from the anterior two thirds of the tongue to the brain, while the cauda tympani nerve carries taste sensations from the anterior two thirds of the tongue to the brain, as well as parasympathetic fibers to the submandibular and sublingual salivary glands. They are like the dynamic duo of sensations from the tongue. The cauda tympani nerve, with its parasympathetic fibers, helps us to regulate the salivary glands, ensuring that the mouth stays moist and healthy. Without the lingual nerve and cauda tympani nerve working together, our sense of taste would be greatly diminished. Pop quiz How about exploring some clinical conditions involving the mandibular nerve and its branches? Referred pain involving the mandibular nerve is seen when there is irritation or damage to the nerve or its branches. One common source of referred pain involving the mandibular nerve is from the temporomandibular joint, TMJ. Problems with this joint can cause pain that is felt in the lower teeth and jaw. This pain is often described as a dull ache or a feeling of pressure in the jaw area. Another cause of referred pain involving the mandibular nerve is from dental problems such as tooth decay, abscesses or gum disease. These issues can cause pain that is felt in the lower teeth and may also cause swelling and inflammation in the surrounding tissues. Certain medical conditions such as trigeminal neuralgia can also cause referred pain. Patients may experience severe stabbing pain in the lower face and jaw that can be triggered by even mild movements such as brushing their teeth or eating. Dental anesthesia is the administration of local or general anesthesia to prevent pain and discomfort during dental procedures. The mandibular nerve is commonly anesthetized during extractions or root canals to provide numbness to the lower teeth, gums and lip. This is typically achieved through a nerve block technique where anesthetic is injected near the nerve to block its function. Let us now summarize this session. The mandibular nerve arises from the trigeminal nerve. It is a mixed nerve which arises in the middle cranial fossa. The nerve leaves the cranial cavity through the foramen ovale. In the face, it divides into anterior and posterior divisions which have their own course and branches towards the front and back of head respectively. The main trunk of the nerve gives rise to the meningeal branch and the nerve to the medial pterygoid. The buccal nerve, the masseteric nerve, the nerve to the lateral pterygoid and the deep temporal nerves arise from the anterior division. The posterior division gives rise to the auriculotemporal nerve the lingual nerve and the inferior alveolar nerve. Mandibular nerve is commonly anesthetized in dental procedures 
and this is called nerve block technique. With that, we come to the end of this session on the mandibular nerve. We hope you had fun learning with us.